What's up, everybody? I'm JP Bedell. This is Delivered Lumens. For the better part of the last two decades, I have worked with light, either as a architectural lighting designer, a theatrical lighting designer, or in my day job today, where I work with the best lighting designers in New York City to create some amazing projects. What I want to do is take that product knowledge and the work I do with those great designers and bring it to you guys. Interior designers and architects who are struggling with different details. Today, we're going to talk about recessed lighting and why you shouldn't just let your contractor pick any old downlight. We're going to go through six inch downlight, contractor grade downlights, and the spec grade downlights you should use. So stick with us. We're going to go through this video. You're going to see what happens at big box stores, what are some of the downlights I recommend, and how to get your spec right on your next project. Okay, so a walk through the lighting aisle here at this particular place shows just how little lighting is considered because housings and, you know, are just thrown in kind of shelves and tossed around and I found what I'm looking for. The classic six inch downlight. Now, we're going to get back in the shed and I'm going to talk about why you don't want to use a six inch downlight. Okay, so let's talk about this downlight that I bought at the big box store. This is your basic contractor grade six inch downlight. It has been in existence for whew, since the 70s, I think, maybe even earlier. Uh, basic components are you've got a housing like this. This is going to hold the light bulb. You've got these brackets here. You've got a junction box here. And then within the fixture, you have right there the socket that holds the light bulb. Now, if you're not familiar, real quick, in a new construction scenario, what's going to happen is there are framing members, right? Your joists or the uh, framing members that hold up your uh, ACT ceiling. What's going to happen is these sliding arms right here, these sliding arms have little nailer bars on them. I'll get that real close right there. If you've got wooden joists, you nail these in. If you've got an ACT ceiling, you can sit this in and punch it into the middle. Um, and that's going to hold this upright, okay? So your contractor is going to level this. They're going to hold this upright like that, okay? This goes in before the ceiling. Some people don't understand that. This is a new construction downlight. So this goes in ahead of the ceiling. This guy right here is the junction box. So in North America, it is required that if you're making a line voltage connection, it has to happen in a confined box. You'll often see junction boxes like in, you know, in your kitchen, in the walls, right? They're all, you know, those four inch J boxes. For purposes of code, this manufacturer has got this uh, J box attached and there's a little wiring box right here. Very simple. Your positive and your, ne your neutral and your positive, as well as your ground. Your contractor can feed this from the top, from either side and get you an electrical connection. This is an exceedingly simple device because all that's doing through this piece of conduit right here, this little flexi whip, is feeding that 120 volt power right here to that socket. So it's just powering a light bulb. It's really no different than the light bulbs, you, than, you know, your lamp at home. It's the same basic idea. It's just that this is happening in a sealed connection above your ceiling is the trim. So you don't have just a raw hole in your ceiling. So this is a six inch downlight, right? That means that the aperture of this downlight is six inches, okay? That's the aperture. That's how all manufacturers talk about it, this width. So it's actually slightly wider on your ceiling. Once your light bulb is in place and everything is up and running, this guy slides in here like that to make it decorative and the whole of the ceiling and make it nice and quiet. You will see with these older contractor grade lights, decorative is a bit of a misnomer. That's what you're seeing inside this sort of faceted opening in there. But we'll light this up and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I've got this bad boy all wired up. I pop my trim in, I put a light bulb in it, and here is what you get. Oh, that looks great, right? Look at that, nice. That's a PAR 30 lamp in there. Now look, the reality is that the optics are all housed within the lamp, right? So this is an LED lamp. Um, Here's your trim, all kind of goofy in there. Uh, with that huge gap you're seeing around the light source, it looks hideous, right? No one wants this in their ceiling. Now, 
Of course, there are better applications than this. I know that I just grabbed a housing and a light bulb and I stuck a trim in it and I lit it up and this is not fair to many of the installations you're gonna see. But I'm doing this to make a point. The point is, is that once you open up your fixture to just a medium base socket, down the road, any light bulb can get put in there, right? Unless there's really rigorous standards and somebody to maintain it, you're gonna get installations like this. Maybe not all the time, but often enough. All right, so if you've been following along so far, you may be thinking, hey, that's not necessarily fair to the light fixture, right? Like, I've seen contractor grade recessed down lights that look better than that. And so, you know, that's not fair to them. That's fair. While I was at the big box store, I caught one of these, right? This is meant to be a six inch LED retrofit kit. There's a little port right here. That port takes the line voltage right out of the socket that we've already wired up and connects right in here and gives you a recessed light. Let's take a look at that and let's see what we think. Okay, so my retrofit kit is set up in here. I'm gonna bring it real close to the camera so the camera itself adjusts. And you can see this is a much softer, much better looking light source. No doubt about it. I can even back up to here and let the camera readjust again. And what you're going to see is it's much nicer than just having that light bulb stuck up in there. I won't argue otherwise. That said, there are some real problems with using a light source this big in your ceiling. This is where we're going to start talking about glare. So what is glare? Glare is unwanted visibility, visibility into the light source, okay? So what that means is this is a big six inch aperture, right? Just hanging out in your ceiling. When you've got a, an opening this wide and you're walking along it, it becomes incredibly easy to see up into this light source. It's distracting and it creates those little halos of light in your eyes after you've seen it, right? Nobody wants to see that in their ceiling. So if you've created this really nice kitchen environment or this really nice interior office environment, and then you let your contractor source a six inch downlight, even if it's a relatively nice installation of a six inch downlight, it's not going to be the look and feel you want. And we're gonna compare that to what you should use right now. All right, so let's talk about what a modern LED downlight looks like. So. It's not really appropriate to call this a recessed can or a hi-hat because what you're looking at is basically this, okay? This is the light engine of a modern LED downlight. This is from my friends at H.E. Williams. Full disclosure, I represent H.E. Williams in the New York City market through my work at SDA Lighting. Um, this is a sample they gave me for a project, so I'm using it as an example for you guys. If you look in here, there is no light bulb. There is no socket. That's just an LED source, okay? This is the heat sink that keeps that LED cool. This can be installed as a retrofit solution or as a new construction solution. I don't have a pan here, but basically this would slide into a new construction pan similar to what you saw with the six inch downlight. Here's the difference though. That's your opening, okay? This is an incredibly small, discreet two inch opening in your ceiling. Let's compare that with this. I can get this whole thing right in the center of it. That's how much narrower we're talking when we talk about lighting, and when we talk about modern LED lighting. You don't need all this space to create the kind of look and effect you're looking for. You can get 1,500 lumens out of this, which is what that big guy is doing. So I'm gonna fire this up. We're gonna look at it as a comparison. Okay, really important thing just to talk about in terms of the construction of a modern LED downlight. What we talked about before was that um, on the six inch downlight, it was just a line voltage power to the socket. That is not exactly the case with a modern downlight. So modern LEDs need a transformer to reduce line voltage down to the low voltage that LEDs require. That's here. That's what this uh, transformer, what we call them a driver, uh, uh, is doing. So this is gonna connect to power. This is just connected to the socket right now, but you know, to the outlet. But you understand this is gonna be connected out to your line voltage power. Um, it's gonna reduce that down to somewhere between 24 and 36 volts, depending on what the LED wants, through this low voltage wire connecting it back to the fixture. This is usually going to sit on a new construction pan. It can also go in, a, in what we call a retrofit housing, which is essentially enclo an enclosure with a wiring box that can slip up into the ceiling after the fact. So that's your driver taking power, converting it to low voltage, 
connecting it through the heatsink to the LED light engine itself, which is what you're seeing here. Now I'm going to put the trim on here. You'll notice this trim is not all that dissimilar to the big six inch trim we saw, except that it's a die cast piece, one, pi uh, one piece with a lens that's going to slide into the, uh, into the body of the housing and just make for a really clean aperture opening. So really simple. A couple of things you're going to notice about this. It's a little tough to see in this shot, but the light source is regressed deeply into this two inch channel. And what that does is it cuts down on glare. So once you start forcing a lot of light out of a small aperture, you risk increasing that glare factor. The best way to think about this is like, if you ever drink hot coffee out of a travel mug, well, that small little opening <laughs> can make that coffee really hot, right? So what we wanna to try to do is mitigate light source deeper into the cavity, right here. I'll bring that right in there. It gives your eye more ways to adjust. And I'll... Okay. We have talked six inch downlights, contractor grade downlights, all kinds of reasons we don't wanna use those. We don't want the surface glare. We don't want that big wide opening in our ceiling. We want the attention from the lighting to go to the fixtures and to the, the other cho finishes you've chosen. If you're an interior designer or an architect and you have chosen beautiful finishes for your space, you don't want the attention to go up to the ceiling to these gigantic lights. We don't really see specified in the New York market anything bigger than a four and a half inch down light. There are reasons to use a fixture that size. Let's say you've got a double height space and you really want to get lights spread out across the space. That four and a half inch opening 20 feet up in the air is not that offensive. Sure, go for it. We see three inch down lights very commonly specified all across the New York City market. It's really the go-to aperture size nowadays for designer spaces because it gives you the best of both worlds. It gives you all of the housing options that you've come to uh, know from traditional down lights, um, but a small aperture. I showed you a two inch down light from H.E. Williams. Two inch apertures are very common these days. This is a one inch down light, okay? This is from USAI, another manufacturer I represent here in New York. This little one inch guy can be installed as a retrofit kit or as a new downlight. It can have a driver that's attached directly to it or it can go with a remote driver. The benefit of remote drivers is that, first of all, serviceability is easier because they're located in a accessible location. And secondly, you can share a driver among up to six downlights, which allows for just cost savings across the board. Um, so if you've got six downlights in your kitchen, they can all be running off of one driver. This guy is not going to be able to push out as much light, of course, as a six-inch downlight. You're not going to get 1,500 lumens out of it, but you can get between six and 800 lumens out of it, which is more than enough for most eight-foot to 10-foot ceiling applications, depending on your spacing. So now you have designer options that run from all the way from four and a half inches down to less than an inch in terms of your openings. Very, very clean, very small, discrete downlights are an option today, and they're an affordable option. It is important to talk about cost. If your contractor is picking the downlight, odds are that downlight's going to be the cheapest one they can find. That's fine for cost savings, but again, you get what you pay for. No different than buying IKEA furniture. IKEA is great, IKEA is very inexpensive, you build it yourself and it may fall apart. <laughs> With, when it comes to these contractor-grade downlights, again, nothing wrong with them, but you're sacrificing a heavy glare and non-architectural look and performance over time. When it comes to spec-grade downlights, you're gonna get better performance, you're gonna get a much better look in your ceiling, better glare control, better dimming. We haven't even talked about dimming, that's a whole other thing. Um, but it is gonna come at a little bit more of an upfront cost. What that cost is, it can range anywhere from $100 a downlight up to $300, $400 a downlight if you want things like color changing, tunable white, all the other bells and whistles. That's stuff we could talk about in a future video. My point here is reach out to your local reps, reach out to the folks that deal with these lights every day, okay? You have options in the one, two, three, and four inch range that are gonna look better and they're going to accent your architecture and your designs better don't let a contractor or a distributor just push whatever lighting they want on you on your project. It's just a waste of, of all the effort you put in. All right? If you have questions, go ahead and hit me with a comment below. And if this video was helpful to you, like or subscribe, I would be thrilled. I can't wait to see you on the next one.